Okay, everyone, showtime. Um, this broadcast brought to, uh, sponsored by Brooklyn Body Gear. Uh, best underwear money can buy. Okay, guys, BA14, chapter 5. We're going to start with chapter 5 first, and then I'm going to go back to chapter 1 and chapter 2. But this, is, this week um, is chapter 5, and the homework and articles are related to chapter 5. Analyzing the marketing environment. The whole idea of the marketing environment is to, the whole idea of the marketing environment is that you have to constantly at, analyze. If things change in the market, you have to change your marketing strategy and your marketing plan based on what happens in the market. If you remember, if you started reading the articles about, uh, about cereal, obviously the market's changing with cereal. We talked about this in reference to um, Chapter 1, we talked about, in Chapter 1, we spoke about how milk, things are changing in milk, which is why they had to advertise milk, because the environment changed. So then you have to change your strategy. So we're going to talk about analyzing the marketing environment, and this is everything that we're going to talk about. So, let's start. This is the whole thing that you need to know, okay? The customer is in the middle, okay? And then you have the immediate environment, the three C's for the immediate environment, three C's. The three C's are the company, your own, your company, your competition, second C, and your corporate partners. Who are your corporate partners? We talked about this. Who is Starbucks' corporate partner? Right? The roasters, the landlords. These are the people that are their corporate partners. The cup guy, right? The cup guy that I always talk about. Uh, corporate partners. So the three C's are the immediate environment. Of course, the customer is in the middle. Why is the customer in the middle? Without a customer, you have nothing. Okay, and then there's the macro environment, which is known as CD step, C D S T E P, CD step. The easiest way to remember the macro environment. C culture, D demographic, C D S. It doesn't have it here, but S. They have culture twice, but it's supposed to be S. Social, social. T technological, E economic, P political. Any changes in any of these? macro environment, of course, you're going to have to change your strategy. We already know that the, uh, the culture of drinking milk is not the same as it used to be 30 years ago, which is why the culture of milk, um, drinking, cult uh, drinking the milk, is changing. Okay, Economic changes. Right now, we have corona, the coronavirus. Of course, there might be changes in, in the economy now. We already know why is the market dropping, why um, many companies are now forecasting that their sales are going to be down for this year and they're probably going to make many changes once the corona is finished to try to bring the sales up because of economic conditions. Get it? So, remember, this customer in the middle, the three C's, immediate environment, company, competition, corporate partners, okay, and the macro environment, easiest way to remember, CD step, CD step, culture, demographic, S, social, T, technological, E, economic, P, political. Okay, let's go through each of these. The immediate environment, the company, let's talk about the company. The point about the company is that the company has to focus on their core competencies. Core competency. Let's take the word core, core, this is your core. What does that mean? Main, the main part, right? The main part of your body is your core, the main part of the company, the core of the company. Competency, the main thing that they are good at, competent. Okay, competency, core competency. What are they good at? What is Coca-Cola, what are they good at? They're good at making a quality product. They're good at their marketing. They're good at locational excellence, which we talked about in chapter two. They don't make snow tires. Coca-Cola does not make snow tires. Why? It's not their core competency. They take their core competency with their existing knowledge, facilities, and their patents, and they apply it to new markets, new products, everything that they want to do, which is why they made uh, well, this is not a Coke product. We know Aquafina is Pepsi, but this is why they don't make snow tires. They're making Gatorade. They're making other products that are complementary to their own uh, product line. They, they want to uh, successfully leverage their company capabilities, their core competency, what the company does. If there's any changes in the marketing environment, for example, we already know that people don't necessarily drink diet soda all the time uh, because they feel it's unhealthy. Uh, that might be a change in their own company policy, okay? Which is why we spoke about Coke Zero. Coke Zero 
Uh, this was probably a concern when they first started their marketing strategies, that how many places can, can we sell to? There's one place that they can't sell Coke Zero to. Where can they not sell Coke Zero? Any diet products. Whole Foods does not sell any diet soda. Okay? Why? They feel it's unhealthy. So that's one place where they can't sell it. So they're probably thinking, before we come out with this product, even though it's at core competency, this might affect our company. Okay? Uh, your competitors. Know your competitors, strengths and weaknesses, what they're good at, what they're not good at. And be proactive instead of reactive. Okay? If you keep chasing after your competition, you will never catch up to them. Okay? So it's always better to be proactive. Think ahead. Think of what the, what the environment is going to go to. Think about, what, think about looking ahead on where the uh, marketing and the product and what the customer wants before it happens so they can, you can come out with it beforehand. That's what was so great about Apple and their iPod, or not the iPod, on the iPhone. Steve Jobs created a brand new product, which is, instead of having the phone just, um, just a cell phone, they are actually, uh, you're actually using it for email and, compute and all these other computer things. And obviously this was a market disruption, but this is a little beyond the scope of this class. So remember, understand what your competitor is doing and be proactive and that's something that uh, you can be proactive. So, and this is why Apple is still ahead of the curve on this. Okay, and of course, what's the third C? Your corporate partners. What are your corporate partners are? Your, your uh, operations, okay? What they're good at, firms that are part of the alliance from the factory to the retailer. What is that called? Supply chain, right? Their supply chain. Understand what your, what, your, what your suppliers are doing. If there's a problem right now, obviously because of corona, there is a problem with maybe delivery and supply chain. We hear that there isn't a problem with supply chain because there are plenty of people still with delivery. But let's say there was a problem with the supply chain. This would affect uh, the marketing environment. Okay? So understand your corporate partners. If there was, God forbid, a hurricane in Sumatra where they make the beans, this would affect the business. What happens, what happens guys, when there is a frost in Florida? What happens to orange juice prices? Of course, they go up, okay? Um, this, so, our orange juice companies, with the, with the farmers and the growers, they, the, the growers say, we have to charge you more. This changes the marketing, the marketing environment and they have to raise the prices. Nothing in marketing happens by accident. Keep that in mind. Okay, now the macro environment, CD step, once again, CD step, never forget that. Culture, demographic, um, social, political, no, T, technological, uh, economic, and political. We'll go through each one of these. Okay, two kinds of culture. There's country culture, and then there's regional culture. Regional culture, in reference to the United States, our region, there are some things that are in the north that are easier to sell than in the south, okay? I speak about how in Boston, clam chowder is very, very big. It's probably harder to sell clam chowder to someone in Texas. Not that they can't sell it, but this is more of a regional culture type of thing. While the south of Texas, Tex-Mex is very big. Not that there's not Tex-Mex in the north, but there are certain regions that like a certain product. Um, what I like to show, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect it to the YouTube, there is a My Cousin Vidi. Uh, my Cousin Vinny. My Cousin Vinny is a perfect movie, which is a perfect example of regional culture. Regional culture. How you got to see the movie. It's great. I'm going to leave you with a clip attached to this uh, YouTube video. And then you can see the idea of regional culture. And of course, country, country culture. Each country has its own particular culture. You have to analyze that. We all know that in India... Uh, in India, let me go back, in India, uh, they don't eat beef. Beef is considered, um, a cow is considered holy. So you have to change. You can't just put a Big Mac in India, the Big Mac that we have in the United States. It just wouldn't sell and you probably would be out of business. Uh, so keep that in mind. So understand the country culture um, when you analyze the market environment. We're going to talk more about that during um, global marketing. Okay? That's culture. Demographic. Easily understood snapshot of a typical consumer. Why do we use demographics when we're, when we're trying to sell a particular product? When we talk about segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Why do we use demographics? Simple. People of the same demographic usually like the same products and usually buy the same products. Old people don't buy the same things as young people. Okay? Um, people who have more money don't buy the same things as people who have less money. 
Okay? Here is a perfect, here is a perfect way, a perfect acronym to remember, to remember demographic. And maybe I should write this down somewhere. Give me one second. Here is, here is the best way to remember demographic. Okay? Here it is. Ah, let me go back. Okay. Here it is. A, G, I, E, squared. Or coefficient. Or maybe squared is up there. A, G, I, E, squared. The best way. What is A? Age. Gender. G, gender. I, income. E, education, and second E, ethnicity, okay? People of the same age like the same things. People of the same gender can buy the same things. There are some things that are gender specific, obviously. Income, we already spoke about this. Pe um, people of the same income levels can buy the same things, okay? Education and ethnicity, and we're gonna go through each one of these, okay? Okay? Generational cohorts. There are different kind. There are different generation levels. So even in reference to age, keep one thing in mind: the, the fact that the people of different age groups like different things. Baby boomers, my my dad and my mama, okay, like something different than I like, okay, than I would like. And where am I? Okay, I'm probably even though we like to pretend, I'm I usually say 1947. But yes, there are people that there are things that I like that are different than what you guys like, than my students like. Obviously, we always talked about that I like Sting, the, group, the, the, the musician Sting. Half of you guys, three quarters, actually all of you guys, never even heard of him, okay? You're in Generation Y to Generation Z. Generation Y, also called Millennials, right? But as you can see, the generational cohorts should be broken up even further between Generation X. Actually, uh, Generation Y is a little too big, 1977 to 2000. Imagine someone born in 1977 compared to someone who was born in, 19, in 2000. You can't be the same generational cohort. You like different things. So this is really broken up. They actually call them Xennials, okay? Which means um, part of Generation X up to a certain point, 1977 to maybe 1987 or 88. I would, I would uh, split this... I would split this probably in half, right? So uh, 23 years, so I'd probably make it 11 years and 11 years. Uh, X annuals, 1977 to let's say 80, 88, and 88 to 2000 would be a different generation of cohort is what I would do. And they call that now X annuals. Different people, different generation. My nephew, who's generation Z, doesn't even know what a phone on the wall is. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't even answer the phone on the wall. When I was younger, the phone rang, we ran to answer it. Today, he doesn't even answer the phone. And I say, why do you not answer the phone? He goes, why would I answer the phone? It would never be for me. And he's right. Okay, generational cohorts. A, that's A. Okay, G. Wait, where's G? Okay, obviously, oh, we're talking about income first. Okay, I like to do A, G, I, E squared, and I think it sounds better, but we're gonna do income first. Okay, person power is tied to income. Obviously, the more money you make, the more you're gonna spend. So, you want to you want to um, market towards particular income. It's just very simple. When they are advertising something that is pretty inexpensive, we know where dollar stores are, which neighborhoods dollar stores are. They are particular for a particular income level, for a particular neighborhood that's, a, that's in a particular income level. And we know that Mercedes, the top S-Class, is advertised to a, different, to a different income level. Okay, so we know that. Once again, incomes change, change in the marketing environment. That's what this is all about. Okay, education. We already know education is related to income. Guys, everyone has a friend that never went to high school and is making all this money. Or they think they have a friend. It might not even be true. Um, I never, I always believe that there's a lot of fake news when people say they have all this money. Show me a tax return and then I'll prove, then that's going to prove whether you have money or not. The more education you have, uh, statistically speaking, the more money you're going to make, okay? So don't stop where you are. Just keep learning. Look at me. I'm still learning. Maybe it'll make me more money. Maybe not, but it's always better to keep learning. Okay, gender. Male and female roles have changed, okay? Marketing has to reflect that. 
Okay, you can see the guys in the supermarket. My, in, in my parents' days, my father never went to the supermarket, okay? Um, but today, men and women's roles change. There's some kind of statistic, maybe it's true, uh, that 30% of women make more money than their husbands. Um, uh, of wives make more money than their husbands. If that's true, then the husband should be doing a lot more work. Um, I always talk about OG, and OG, she used to tell me, uh, I make more money than you, so if we ever got married, you would be doing all the shopping. Uh, one, uh, and one more reason why we're not together. Okay. Uh, male and female roles have changed, so we have to reflect that. Um, one thing I always like to say is go into the Target bathroom. If you go into the Target men's bathroom, there is a changing station there. There was never a changing station in a men's bathroom until uh, the past 10 or 15 years because gender roles have changed. Okay? Ethnicity. Okay, you, there are different uh, groups in our country, and you want to uh, market towards that particular group. As you can see, Wendy's, there's a Spanish ad, might be in tax Texas, or in S Southern California, where there's a majority of Hispanic people. It could actually be in New York, or where there's a majority of Hispanic uh, Florida, of course. Okay, um, you would probably want to, or you wouldn't probably, if you were someone like Wendy's, as you can see, you want to market towards that particular ethnic group. Why not do every particular ethnic group? Okay? So we went through A-G-I-E squared, remember that. Uh, social, so now we're up to social. C-D step, we're up to S, social trends. Thrift, wellness, greener consumers, privacy concerns, time for society. If social trends, cha ch uh, trends change, this is what um, you're going to have to change your strategy. Okay? Thrift, people, people are starting to spend uh, less. Um, even though we're in a good economy right now, who knows what's going to happen with the coronavirus. This might be something that might change people's idea of spending. Okay? You want to save more. People are saving more. Um, people don't have as much money. We know that, that a lot of students have student loans and aren't making as much. So they're trying to save money and they don't want to dip into their savings. Thrift is, an, is uh, something that we have to worry, be concerned about today from a marketing standpoint. And because of this, why everything is now is that they use uh, some benefit segmentation. We are cheaper than the other guy, okay? Um, health and wellness. Um, Subway ads, eat fresh. People are all concerned about health and wellness. Salads at McDonald's. Uh, salads, we just saw the, uh, the slide with Wendy's salads. Keep one thing in mind. Health and wellness, healthier food, Chipotle, all of this idea of we want to be healthy, okay? And we want to, we don't want to eat all this fattening stuff. Okay? Uh, greener consumers. People are concerned about recycling. Everything is recycled, right? The, uh, the Starbucks napkins recycled. The cups recycled, right? Everything is recycled. The paper, uh, you recycle paper. People are concerned about recycling, okay? Uh, these are the social trends. Privacy concerns. We're concerned about privacy now. We don't want to just give away um, our emails, our phone numbers, our social security numbers, okay? In my day, um, I will tell you this, when I was in Brooklyn College, back in 1947, um, we, didn't have a, uh, we didn't have an ID number. Our ID number was our Social Security number. Thinking about this today, it is absolutely insane that we used to give out that Social Security number like it was nothing. It was absolutely insane. Privacy gets a loss of privacy, identity theft. Do not call, do not email, we're concerned about privacy. Okay? And we're, we're in a time poor society. More people work today. We have less time, less time for leisure activities. So the leisure activities, everybody's fighting for leisure activities. In the olden days, uh, my parents would go to the movies every single week. We don't go to the movies every single week. They try to still have that, where movies come out every single week. But there are so many other leisure activities. Much more, many more choices regarding leisure time. Okay, and a major and many people multitask. They can do a bunch of things at the same time. How do you keep them? How do you keep someone um, focused and engaged when they like they do a lot of multitasking? This is one of these new, not one, I'm just to say trends, but this is something that is changing the marketing environment. We know that people like to watch videos, but the video should only be a short time, which is why this video that you're watching is not going to be more than 20 minutes. Okay? So, uh, in a majority of families, most people, most parents work. So, of course, this means time poor. We have a lot less time to do um, 
all the stuff that they used to do in, uh, before in reference to leisure activities. Okay? And technological advances, obviously, new forms of communication, new retail channels. Technology has impacted everything. Okay? We know Brooklyn Body Gear. We know Brooklyn Body Gear is sold only online at Amazon. Okay? I sell it not in the stores, mainly because I'm taking, taking advantage of technological advances. It will also save me some money and uh, eliminate the middleman. Okay? Brooklyn Body Gear, as we know. Okay? Technological advances. Um, self-checkout. We already know self-checkout. Everybody talks about, oh, you shouldn't do self-checkout. But the truth is, you can't turn back time. Okay? Self-checkout is here. And I believe self-checkout is a lot better for businesses. Remember, I, as much as I talk about, um, you know, the labor force in the United States, I'm in this point, I'm in a position where I'm speaking from a business aspect. From a business aspect, self-checkout is the best thing. Hiring less people is more profit for the company. And when you're talking about profits, you're concerned about your shareholders. Okay? The economic situation. The only thing you have to worry about the economic situation is the econo if, if the economy changes, if we call and go into a recession, if we're in prosperity. Right now we're in prosperity, people are, are spending money. Up until the corona, a month ago, people were spending money. People made money, there was a lot of consumer confidence. Now the economic situation might be changing, we don't know. It could all turn around in two weeks. I don't know. And this, this video might be dated in a month from now. Or I might be a genius and this might continue. But I don't think I'm a, I don't know if I'm a genius. Uh, the point is, all I'm concerned about is if the econo economy changes, then your marketing strategy has to change. And it'll be very interesting to watch what goes on with Corona. Okay, and, and of course, political and regulatory things. Forget all of these acts. All I really care about is the fact that, that if tariffs went up, we were talking about tariffs from China, if the tariffs went up, the tariffs for my product, then this is going to affect me selling this particular product. I might have to raise my prices, or I might have to make less profit to determine what goes on, if there's some kind of um, new tariffs, or the opposite. What if becomes, what if like the NAFTA agreement, which now is a USMCA, it's called, US-Mexican-Canadian agreement. US-Mexican-Canada, US-Mexico-Canada agreement. USMCA. Ta if there's no tariffs, all of a sudden, let's say now there's no tariffs on this particular, on this particular uh, brand of fabric, then I might be able to save some money and either reduce my price or just make more profit for myself. Okay? So anything that happens politically um, will change your marketing environment. That is everything, boys and girls. So, remember, CD Step, A-G-I-E squared, and I will see you soon. Guys, I love you all. Thank you.